All right, good morning and welcome, commissioners, to the meeting of the History Social Science Subject Matter Committee. I'm Bill Honig, co-chair of the committee. On behalf of the Instructional Quality Commission, I'd like to welcome the commissioners, state board members, department staff members, and members of the public who are present today. I'll get right to the point. We appeal to the commission to bring the treatment of India and Hinduism in the narrative in line with the standards for evaluating instructional materials for social content. The ethnic and cultural group section of this state law requires teaching material to instill in each child a sense of pride in his or her heritage. The religion section instructs that no religious belief or practice be held up to ridicule and that no religious group be portrayed as inferior. It requires that students be allowed to remain secure in any religious beliefs they may already have. As you will hear, this is not what is happening to our Hindu children who find the section on India and Hinduism demeaning and hurtful, a problem not solved by the proposed draft. I'm here as an American citizen and a California Hindu. Uh, like I said, I'm deeply concerned at the unfair negative portrayal of Hinduism and Indian civilization in California textbooks. I find this vilification and negative portrayal it's, and the egregious lighting of Indian civilization in world history as dishonest and frankly against the spirit of education. Um, I think it is simply un-American. We are asking for fairness in this process. Uh, there is n absolutely nothing in the textbooks about Hinduism that a practicing Hindu would recognize as, as Hinduism. I would go as far as to state that. Um, there are some lofty ideals of cultural understanding mentioned in the framework and the standards, and I feel they are simply not being extended to Hindus and to people with Indian heritage. I urge you to please take urgent and necessary steps to ensure that the textbooks that our kids Time. read. Um, I also support the edits of Dr. Bajpai of Uberai Foundation. My name is Kashvi Pandya and I'm a 7th grader from California. Last year, I should have learned about Hinduism from the textbook, but after seeing what the textbook says, my dad decided to give a presentation to my class about Hinduism. When I was looking through the textbook and found the section on Hinduism, I was shocked to see what they said about it. One of my Hindu friends was also sitting next to me and she wanted to see the section about Hinduism. She looked at the textbook and was feeling very insecure and uncomfortable because of the derogatory statement about Hinduism said in it. Insecure? Uncomfortable? The law clearly states that no child should feel uncomfortable or insecure about their religion based on what is taught in the textbook. So, the way Hinduism is taught in the textbooks is clearly breaking the law. When I looked through the sections on other religions, there was not one bad thing said about them. They only talked about the good aspects of those religions. Hinduism was the only religion that had anything negative said about it. What did Hindus ever do to you? Is there any reason? I think that this should be changed because I'm an American student and my religion deserves to be taught with respect. Thank you. My name is Vyamaka Pandya and I am an eighth grader from California. Last year in seventh grade when learning about world history, I learned nothing about India or Indian civilizations. Not one word. I learned outside of school that during the era we've been studying, <laughs> India held 24% of the world's population. Using this same ratio, our 600 page textbook should have about 144 pages on Indian culture. There was not a single. Why? How could anyone overlook close to a quarter of the medieval world's population. If I did not learn about my culture outside of school, I would think that Indian culture was not important and did not have any accomplishments in the world, when in reality, this is not at all true. India has a rich and diverse culture which has produced great thinkers, rulers, doctors, food, inventions, medicine, and many other contributions to our modern way of life. Therefore, it must be fairly represented in California textbooks. Thank you. Thank you. 
big warm cheerful thanks for everyone who came today. My name is Deeksha Mamadi and I'm a seventh grader at Thomas Russell Middle School. Let's get straight to the point. Often Hinduism Hinduism isn't portrayed positively in textbooks. Other times, it isn't portrayed at all. I have no idea why, but this makes me feel religiously discriminated. Sometimes, when reading about Christianity and Islam, I feel as if textbook publishers, editors, authors, and many more have forgotten about my religion and culture. It is imperative we make changes. Everyone comes to America in the hopes to be acknowledged by their dreams, personalities, and many more. How on earth are students like me supposed to dream about careers when it's like we're invisible in written forms? We have a voice and we want to make that apparent. Hinduism is a beautiful religion with gods and goddesses. We have role models, but they aren't celebrities, professional sports players, or actors. They're the ones who do good deeds, donate, and make wise decisions. The message that I'm getting while reading my textbook in history is, hey there, you or your religion is not welcome. Bye-bye. Some excerpts are biased with British insights. We glorify certain cultures in an unfair way. Some cultures that were meant to do harm are praised immensely. This is unacceptable and I would like further action taken. Hello everyone. My name is Bhavani and I work for University of California, Berkeley. As a parent of seventh grader, I am here to express my concern today. My daughter is feeling it difficult to openly talk about her religion because of what it is written in her 6th grade textbook. The information published, published in the book is not at all a Hindu perspective. As a citizen of America, I believe that each individual has the right to practice their religion, but I do not understand why Hinduism is singled out and misinterpreted. All I am requesting here is a fair treatment and social justice. I would like to see the corrections made for Hinduism in the 6th grade textbook in a similar way that the corrections were made to the other religions in the past. I have a positive hope that California Department of Education, Instructional Quality Commission, listens our voice today and take necessary appropriate actions. And I really support the ed edits made by Dr. Bajpai for sixth grade textbook from Uberai Foundation. We can use it as a baseline if needed. And in, in the sixth grade class, one of my da daughter's father came to teach the social science because at least our daughter has exposure to the, not only to the textbook, but also to the real, real Hinduism outside. So it is not fair to teach the wrong things and also portray the, only the negative things in the religion, but we deserve, we deserve some respect and then corrections need to be made. Today, most of the students, like thousands, are reading every day and they're re getting the wrong information regarding the Hinduism and getting the wrong message. So I request the corrections. And also, it can still be in the grade level. It can still be the subject specific. And also, I'm not, in I'm not asking to increase the length of the lesson or like, you know, not go out of the subject specific. It can still be in the same length. I'm Time. just asking for facts facts about Hinduism. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brenda Suresh, and I'm a 10th grader from Fremont. I've grown up in the U.S., but I have deep roots to my Indian um, heritage because my family visits India almost every year, and I've attended Chinmaya mission classes since kindergarten. So I'm an Indian American, and I would say that I'm a proud Indian American, but because of the information that's being given in these textbooks, it's hard to be proud of either. Because how can I be proud of uh, be a proud American when American textbooks are attacking my religious and cultural heritage? And how can I be a proud Indian when solely negative information is being published solely about India and Hinduism? I've read the chapters about India in, on ancient India in multiple California sixth grade textbooks. And with the information that's published in these textbooks, it's not at all surprising to me that a lot of my Indian friends and family seem to feel ashamed of their Indian heritage. They try to not be Indian. And I can't really blame them, because nothing appealing about India or Indian religion is being presented in these chapters. How are kids supposed to feel secure in their religion and heritage when they have nothing to feel proud of? when their friends are probably making fun of the, the religion that, according to what they're being taught, is based on ideas like an oppressive caste system and sexism. And they're not being taught that other ancient civilizations at the same time had equally oppressive social classifications and were equally sexist. 
and they're being taught that India was nothing until the Aryans invaded, even though the Aryan invasion theory is historically improbable. Textbooks either need to point out the flaws of every ancient civilization and every religion, or point out the flaws of none of them. But it's completely unfair to take a single society, culture, heritage, religion, and completely tear it to shreds while ignoring the mistakes that have been made by others. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Siva Kolundu Suresh, and I'm a resident of Fremont since 1987. Um, I'm also the parent of uh, two young women, one of them you just heard in 10th grade. And I wanted to address, you know, to the commission, um, the need to improve content in the textbooks pertaining to how Hinduism is presented to the sixth grade students. The current problems as I see it, you know, I tried to summarize them into a, a few brief bullets. Um, inaccuracies in the key tenets, concepts of karma, dharma, words that people know who are adults, but they're never taught and correct to the children who are learning them in sixth grade. Uh, there's also a stress on social problems and conflating that with religion. That happens in uh, Hinduism texts in, in sixth grade today. And overall, leaves a negative impression that it leaves in the minds of you know, impressionable young adults or young children. So my recommendations are that one, um, the, the commission or the content creators should move towards using information from scholarly sources with actual practitioners to improve accuracy in description of the practices and beliefs. Focus on the beliefs and practices and not on the social problems in societies. And finally, explain concepts in an age-appropriate manner and connect today's adherence to ancient philosophies, spiritual practices such as yoga, and other inner knowledge concepts that are hallmarks of the world's oldest religion. So I endorse the recommendation edits by the Hindu American Foundation and uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Bajpai of the Uberai Foundation. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So, hello, I'm Rupesh Barma, a ninth grader in the San Ramon Valley Unified School District. When I was in sixth grade, we had a unit on Hinduism in our history class. Being a Hindu myself, I noticed that there were many things wrong with the book. In fact, it got to the point where my teacher simply let me teach the class because it was more accurate than the textbook. One example of how inaccurate the, our information on Hinduism is the following. On our test for Hinduism, there was a question on what kind of religion Hinduism was. I selected monotheistic, and I ended up getting the question wrong. Now, I know that Hinduism is a monotheistic religion, but it's still being taught in public schools that we believe in multiple gods. We believe in one supreme being in different forms. In all humility, without me, the non-Hindus in my class, and even some of the Hindus, probably would have walked away with mis complete misinformation about the religion. A textbook, a student's biggest resource for learning, shouldn't be so flawed that a sixth grader can provide better information. <laughs> That's why I'm here, missing school and making up for two tests. I want to make sure that students can rely on their textbooks to provide accurate information. I want to make sure that a student does not have to assume the role of teacher because their textbook was inaccurate. I'm not saying that history textbooks are bad on the whole. I actually like their layout, and on the whole, I. I mean, I guess their information is pretty accurate because experts. Um, I'm solely focused on not having a religion with over one billion practitioners misrepresented in school, a place where children come to learn information that they will use in everyday life. And the way we can do that is with the edits proposed by Dr. Bajpai of the Uberai Foundation. Thank you. Hello, committee members. I'm very thankful that you have given me the opportunity to speak here. My daughter, Ruhi, came back from school very excited, ran straight to her room, and picked up her history textbook. I was surprised and didn't understand what she was up to. As she looked into the textbook, her excitement started to dim. She came down and said, the book is so wrong. They got it all wrong. I went up to her and asked, what was wrong? This is what she said. Mom, we're learning about Hebrews and Judaism. And I was excited to see what they had about Hinduism. 
The book says, Lord Shiva has three eyes. The sim this symbolizes being able to see events from a distance. Now, but doesn't Lord Shiva, Shiva's third eye symbolize wisdom and destruction from evil, of evil? Yes, I agreed. If God is omniscient, omnipresent, all-pervading, why does he need three eyes to see events? If you want to talk about symbolism in Hinduism, then please do it correctly, I urge. Please, uh, people writing this should be more careful when writing a textbook that will influence 3.6 million young minds every year. This is especially important for a subject as sensitive as religion. The girl continued, who knows what else they got wrong? If parts of my religion are wrong, then how do I know if they are teaching other religions correctly? And if I put the correct answers that I have learned since I was six, then the test in, on the test, that would be wrong according to the teacher and the book. Notice how the young girl has started questioning the authenticity of the content of her textbook. To stop this from happening, it must be a priority to include the correct, uh, correct symbolism and basic principles of Hinduism, like accepting the Vedas and the Holy Gita as the fundamental scriptures of life, law of karma, reincarnation, one God in various forms, as somebody already pointed out, and liberation as purpose of life through the four Time. paths. Thank you so much for allowing me, and I hope that corrections would be made. Thank you. Yeah. Dear learned men and women, good morning. My name is Vishnu. I'm from San Jose. My child is studying in fifth grade. So I've been frequently teaching her after I come from office. And uh, through that, I got the opportunity to see the uh, social sciences books from third grade. So one thing that I don't see is uh, any reference to that uh, uh, Hinduism and India. So one thing that I notice in the uh, books are that local topics are covered, which are to the California and to the US. So what there are a lot of uh, folks from here in the California and in the US. So one thing, these are the list. Swami Vivekananda is one of the important religions in the modern times. So he gave a speech in 1893 in the World Parliament of Religions. So that was one of the most celebrated and uh, he became a, a historical figure. So right here in the United States. And then um, regarding the folk arts and music, we can take that George Harrison and the team of Beatles. He was a follower of Swami Prabhupada, who is known to turn the hippies into a happy people, who actually gone into the drunk paths and then drug addicts. He turned them people and good guys. And uh, here, right here in the California, uh, Professor Alan Anderson of San Diego State University he did a quite important research on the Eastern religions, and he, uh, uh, he explained a lot in his uh, books and videos. And uh, there, was, uh, there, there was a famous philosopher called Jiddu Krishnamurti. This, he lived here in the OJ, California, which is in Ventura County near Santa Barbara. So this Professor Alan Anderson had an opportunity, and he picked up, and he met uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti and had a series of lectures. I think about uh, two decades ago, and uh, he, uh, I think they also got published in the uh, TVs around that time, I believe. So time, uh, yeah. So I would like to what I would like the committee to consider these and include the text. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Arjeb Joshi. I am a seventh grader at Cupertino, California. In case you're wondering, no, I do not like to miss school, nor do I like to skip a history test, which I did today. I am here to share how Hinduism is portrayed in the sixth grade history textbooks. Last year, I learned about Hinduism in India, and I was saddened by how I saw Hinduism was being taught compared to other religions. During our recesses, my friends and I would not talk about normal sixth grade boys' topics, but we would discuss what we had learned about Hinduism in India that day and how it was presented in a negative way to make it look inferior to other religions. There were times in class when some bold students would speak out against the words of the textbook, but those words would be shot down by the teacher because she was told to follow the textbook and the state standards, which are not factually accurate. 
I was very happy to see how other religions and empires were presented in a higher standard and positive light, so why leave out Hinduism and India from this group? Even to a sixth grader like me, this bias was so glaringly obvious. If Christians have a say in how Christianity is depicted, and so do other religions, then should not Hindus have a say in how Hinduism is depicted? People from all different races and faiths can learn about the greatness of this ancient religion only if the information in the textbooks and the state standards is correctly showcased. Nobody wants to learn if gravity can pull someone up. They want to know if it can pull someone down. Similarly, no one wants to know the fake stuff about Hinduism. People want to know the true facts. I am confident that this department will take the first step in a positive direction to correct what is wrong. Thank you for your time and consideration. Hey, my name is Acharya Armoganada Swami. There will be a bit test on that later. I'm a monk from a monastery in Hawaii. We are responsible for bringing the Pineapple Express here. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm managing editor of Hinduism Today magazine. Dr. Shiva Bajpai, Professor Emeritus of History, Cal State Northridge, and Director of the Uberoi Foundation Institute for Curriculum Advancement, and I wrote this book, The History of Hindu India, <clears throat> in 2008 as a in response to the 2005 textbook controversy. And this year we did a academic paper which analyzes, and this was part of our submissions, the <clears throat> approved California textbooks and the framework which shows the existing account of Hinduism in all the textbooks wanting an accuracy, authenticity, and sensitivity. With regard to draft to <coughs> India, this draft framework prepared by your predecessors does not reflect the input of experts on India or Hinduism, nor of the community itself. We have submitted revisions that for the sixth grade that are in accord with the social content standards that are complete, that are almost the same length as the original, reflect the best recent scholarship and the sentiments of the Hindu community, especially of the parents and their children who we've met by the hundreds in the last five days. These changes meet all the laws and stipulations of the state. They will be beneficial to the self-esteem and emotional health of the young students by making the narrative on Hinduism comparable to the depiction of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in the textbooks. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Sri Vajpayee. And I'm historian <coughs> of 57 years teaching. If I sound sick, which is at the moment I am, I suffer from Parkinson's disease for the last eight months. Anyhow, the reason I came here <coughs> is to just make the case that our framework needs to be revised, and it should be consistent with the best recent scholarship and sensitivity to practicing Hindus. Now, the, the way we have portrayed Hinduism or teach Hinduism as if it was a relic of the past, it is a living faith. And the social, social institutions that are part of the Indian society are also have been evolving over time. They are not static, they never burn. But nobody has read those texts I had in the last 57 years. The reason that these poison <coughs> are complaining is because a living faith, a dynamic faith, is being taught as a stereotype. The person who writes the book, and I showed the picture last time, they don't even know what Hinduism is. They don't even know what Indians, how Indians look like. Look at some of the textbooks, your textbooks. So the problem is not that, uh, that there is not enough material, but the person who writes it, they don't know about India. They don't know about Hinduism. And they don't want to learn. That's the problem. I, I hate to be so accusative uh, from the poetry about them because they, they think that they are very sincere. But unfortunately, that's the case. Time. So, so the, the I will urge that uh, the commission this time will pay more attention to the framework than was possible in the past. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hello, um, I'm Sadaka Jayanada, assistant editor of Hinduism Today, based out of our monastery in Kuwait. Uh, in the past week, I've been meeting with hundreds of California Hindu parents and students. It reinforced the need to explain these few basic points about Hinduism, most of which are abs absent in the current narrative. By 600 BCE, the social, religious, and philosophical ideas and practices central to early Hinduism are fully evident and in continuity with the Harappan culture and the teachings and ceremonial worship of the Vedas. Hindu scriptures include the Vedas, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita, Puranas, and Agamas. Brahman, the one supreme God, is imminent, present throughout the world, and transcendent beyond it as well. In action, Brahman creates, preserves, and dissolves the universe over vast periods of time. Brahman also becomes the various deities and multiple names and forms who are worshipped as distinct personal gods or goddesses, such as Vishnu, Shiva, Saraswati, Durga, etc., mistakenly characterized as polytheism. Key Hindu beliefs include the identity of the soul with Brahman, Dharma, including ethics, law, and justice, karma, reincarnation, and eventual liberation from rebirth. Central practices include home and temple worship, yoga and meditation, rites of passage, festival, pilgrimage, respect for saints and gurus, and above all, this profound acceptance of religious diversity. Truth is one, paths are many. With the world's two largest democracies, the United States and India, becoming intertwined socially, economically, and spiritually, it is extremely important that American students accurately understand Hindus, one in every seven people on earth. I endorse this adoption of the narrative revision given by Dr. Shiva Bajpai and Acharya Arumukhanava Swami and the Ubroi Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Arvind Kumar, and I represent Kapim. To the commission members today, I have this to say. You may believe that you are writing the framework for teaching history to school students, but in reality, you are authoring yet another chapter in the history of the civil rights struggles of USA through your actions of favoring Abrahamic religions while humiliating the children, Hindu children, using the curriculum as your weapon. Our points are very few, and if you wish, you can fix them. First, while Hinduism is taught through the lens of the anthropologist and the sociologist, Christianity and other religions get the theologian's view. In other words, they get the insider's view, and Hinduism gets the outsider's view. Others have history of their religions. Hinduism is presented through a controversial theory about its, about its origin. A chapter solely describing the beliefs of Hindus will fix this problem. Another point is that the social systems, such as cash from the medieval era, are taught in the ancient era so that Hinduism can be vilified. If you have trouble meeting the standards on this point and fixing the accuracy of the dates, you should delete this factual inaccuracy completely. Otherwise, it would amount to poor scholarship on your part. There are also no heroes from Hinduism in violation of the California Education Code. So it appears that you're aligning the document with the existing textbooks rather than the other way around. It's the textbooks that must follow the framework and not the framework that follow the textbooks. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dr. Nalini Rao, professor of world art in Soka University of America. As an historian and archaeologist, I would like to bring to the notice of the commission and the board the outdated and inaccurate theory about the roots of Hindu civilization, particularly about the Aryan invasion theory, based on an outdated secondary literature and colonial interpretation. The whole reason was because Max Miller came here and found affinities between the Sanskrit language and Latin, and he also found certain uh, uh, skeletons in the excavations. However, 50 years of research has shown that there was no invasion at all. I recently brought out a 1,000-page edited volume on the Sindhu Saraswati civilization and held an international conference on this topic, where eminent historians such as Kenoyer, Bish, Sheffer, Conrad Elst, and others have repeatedly proved that this was an indigenous, indigenous civilization which celebrated pluralism, multi-ethnicity, and philosophical learning. Archaeological evidences are authentic, and their importance for the interpretation of Hindu civilization is of utmost importance for the understanding of students' parents as well as maintaining the integrity of historical truth. In regard to what was said by the commission this morning regarding engaging the students 
uh, about the curriculum, about the Hinduism, is that certain changes need to be made. Firstly, it is possible to engage the students with a piece of sculpture, such as that of Shiva as Nataraja, where we can, uh, the students can understand larger concepts, such as knowledge over ignorance, what is dharma, the four aims of life. Secondly, it is possible to make them understand by talking about yoga and what yoga is, the mind over the body, and how the great teachers who come from India and are still coming from India uh, have taught, the, given the West, a very useful tool in order to uplift themselves. Thirdly, I do understand that a c concept of mandala can be used to understand I'm the monotheist uh, as a religion. And lastly, veneration for environment can be used by quotes from the Upanishads. I would like to thank the commission and the board for their patient hearing. Good morning, or almost afternoon, good afternoon. My name is Samir Kalra, and I'm the Senior Director for Human Rights at the Hindu American Foundation, a national nonprofit advocacy organization for the Hindu American community. We first want to start out by expressing our gratitude and appreciation for the hard work that has gone into creating this draft history social science framework, which is a huge task. After reviewing the draft framework in consultation with scholars in Hinduism, however, we have several concerns with the way in which Hinduism and ancient India are portrayed, particularly in grade level six. Specifically, we find the discussion of concepts such as Brahmanism, a colonial era orientalist construct used to refer to early Hinduism, the caste system, and the, in, and the Aryan invasion theory or Indo-Aryan migrations, just to name a few, to be problematic. While we understand that these concepts are mandated by the standards, an, accurate, sorry, an inaccurate and unbalanced representation of these concepts in the framework will likely lead to textbooks that reflect negatively on Hinduism and make Hindu American children feel inferior. Many Hindu American students many of whom you've already heard from earlier today, have reported being made to feel ashamed of their heritage and religion due to the portrayal of Hinduism in grade six textbooks. We believe many, that many of these concerns can be addressed if the proposed edits submitted by the Hindu American Foundation, along with those edits submitted by Dr. Bajpai of the Oberoi Foundation Institute for Curriculum Advancement are accepted and included in the revised draft framework. Doing so will provide students with the most accurate and balanced understanding of this complex topic area. The Hindu American Foundation, as an advocacy group that works extensively in education, would also like to extend its sources, resources on Hinduism 101 trainings that it does across the country. As the commissioners spoke eloquently earlier on the need to provide teachers with additional resources and links to additional material to supplement the frameworks. I want to thank you again for your time and consideration, and please uh, do consider the edits submitted by the Hindu American Foundation and Dr. Botch by the Obroy Foundation Hi. Institute for Curriculum Advancement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Venu Acharya. I am representing the Hindu Education Foundation. Uh, we, the members of Hindu Education Foundation are seriously concerned about the way in which California textbooks and the current uh, history and social science framework portray Hinduism and the history of India. We write to you to express uh, these concerns and also put forth our proposal for the way in which a new framework should describe standard 6.5. This proposal is aligned to the standard and fairly and accurately describes our heritage. HEF is an educational project by concerned Indians and Hindus in the United States and strives to re replace various misconceptions about India and Hinduism with uh, accurate representations. Such a true representation becomes necessary in a changing world that continues to be plagued by religious misunderstanding, intolerance, and uh, hate and violence. A right understanding of any faith, including that of Hinduism, is a path to peace and harmony, as well as the preservation and nurturing of religious diversity, a vital necessary for the continued well-being of any nation. I hope you will consider to accommodate our uh, comments in a corrected version of the framework. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Praharshita, and in my school in social studies, I don't hear much about India or Hinduism, but I hear a lot about Catholicism and Christianity. I would like to hear a little more about India. Also, the social studies topic doesn't change from grades three to five. I was fascinated by the facts I read in my social studies book 
at first. But now I know all the information I need to know, and I would like to learn a little more about another topic. Thank you. Thank you. Make a sh very short comment. I spoke earlier already. I hand carried with me about 300 letters of support, which I'm going to hand to Mr. McDonald. Just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think we can take 10, 15 minutes if you want, and just have any comments now and then adjourn. I'd like to just say thank you, especially to all the students who spoke. It was fabulous to see you up here speaking and taking an active part in this process. So I'm proud of all of you. You did a fabulous job. So thank you for stepping up and speaking out today. Thank you, everybody. We're adjourned.